students, welcome again to another session that is Media Law and Ethics as a course. My name is Libby Chonya from the Open University of Tanzania and I'm taking you through ethical problems, or no, sorry, ethical principles in journalism. And this is knowledge area 5, as you're able to see there. Now, let us first explore the objectives of this lecture before we proceed. I expect at the end of this lecture that students should be able to highlight the ethical principles in journalism and also enumerate the common ethical problems that journalists face in the day-to-day -day activities. Now, as a part of the introduction, we are saying that the ethical principles in journalism, these are the fundamental codes or the fundamental codes that guide journalism practice all over the world. Which means now we must have the codes or the journalist codes to guide us on how best to practice our profession. So which means now, in other words, these are the pillars underlying the media profession in journalism, without which we cannot perform well as journalists. Which means now, if we don't have these codes, or we don't make an application of these codes, it means now the journalist profession on its entirety is going to lose its credibility and integrity as well. So when we talk of these principles, there are numerous ethical principles, but now the following are the core universally acknowledged, acknowledged ethical principles of the media practice in general. That we could have so many principles around, but the following that we're going to discuss, these are the core principles that journalists face always. And what are they? We have truth. And then we have objectivity, we have fairness and accuracy. These are some of the ethical problems that most journalists face in day-to-day -day endeavors. Now, let us start with the truth. What do we mean when we say truth? Or when, what do we mean exactly when we say journalists should abide by truth? So when we talk of truth, actually we are talking or we are referring to the facts it's a kind of reality told as it is. Which means now when we talk of truth, we are trying to avoid any kind of deceptions or rather dishonest or lying in every form. Which means now journalists must be committed to the truth. So commitment to the truth is the fundamental core objective to any journalist. If you refer to absolutes, by Immanuel Kant, or the ontology, we are saying that we must abide to the principles. And these are universally acknowledged you know, principles, which means now all journalists must abide to telling the truth always. So which means now the commitment to truth is perhaps the most ancient and respected ethical principle in any human civilization. It might happen that sometimes we are tempted to lie in certain situations as journalists. Sometimes we are forced to use deception in order to get any information. Uh, but the bottom line remains to be that truth should entail always. And we must tell the truth as journalists. And truth is, is well entrenched in moral ends legal philosophy. Now, day 2006 discusses the standards of journalistic truth. So we are saying, first, the reporting of the story must be accurate. That is according to day 2006. The facts must be verified. That is, they should be based on solid evidence. As a journalist today, we have so many problems, especially in Africa, where you find that a journalist is just being hired in one of the media organizations and they are not bothered, you know, to go deep, finding the truth, finding the data, supporting the stories. So that, that's where the problem lies. Most of the journalists are lazy, they don't want to work hard. 
to find the supporting evidence to their stories. And we have so many complaints, so many defamation cases filed in courts. Why? Because stories have been published without evidence, without any solid facts, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. They're just being fabricated. So that's where the problem lies. So when we talk of truth, that is an entry point. We talk of accurate, don't be inaccurate. Lack of truth, it means now the story is being unsubstantiated and corroborated information. And as a result now, this undermines the credibility of the media and also it undermines the credibility of the moral agent, and that is the journalist himself. We are putting into jeopardy the entire media industry if we are not telling the truth or if our stories lack, you know, necessary facts. A second requirement for journalists' truth is that in addition to being accurate, a truthful story should promote some kind of an understanding. You might have gathered a lot of facts, fine. But now, do these facts lead to the understanding of the audience when you cover that particular kind of a story? Because what we need at the end of the day, we need an understandability. The audience must understand. You must organize your facts in a way that the audience out there is able to understand what you're trying to communicate to them. So which means now, the goal should be to provide an account that is essentially complete so that the audience out there is able to understand what you're trying to communicate. Which means that a story now should contain as much relevant information as possible. And it should be within the context, it should suit the understandability of that particular coverage. The third criteria for a truthful article is that it should be fair and balanced. Fair and balanced. You have a story as a journalist. Make sure that try to interview both sides, if any. Balance your story. Look at various sources. And as I said before in the previous knowledge area, that we have the problem most journalists that we have a single source syndrome which is rather a big problem in the media industry today, that we must have a diverse sources. We must have a base for diversified sources. And if we do so, it means we're going to enrich our news stories. In addition to avoiding bias, fairness and balance require that journalists accord recognition to those views that enhance the understanding of an issue. So you're saying that avoid bias, be fair enough, try to balance your story so that to enhance understandability of a story. Try to seek, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, audience, try to seek compensation from both sides. Try to seek audience from all parties that are involved in that story and don't be one-sided. Try to cover all the information with all the necessary information, evidence and the facts. Another issue about truth in journalistic practice is the use of deception news gathering and reporting. That's where we get a lot of problems. Some Morris argue that it's wrong to use deception in news gathering and reporting, but some media practitioners have argued that they may sometimes have to use deception to untie a greater truth for the benefits of the society. So we are saying the use of deception, this is a problem that most journalists face today that if you find you want to extract a certain kind of information, for example, if you're an investigative reporter, 
you've been told or you've been uh, told by the, your, 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 I don't know, CEO or chief executive, executive or chief, you know, editor to go and cover a particular story and do an investigative reporter. Now you're trying to use deceptive means to go and uncover a particular story. Now, there are certain ways or there must be some kind of limitations within which to go and uncover that particular story. It's not always the case that you as a journalist, you are allowed to go and extract a story using deceptive means. Mind you, that using deception is not always allowed, and it's, it's especially unethical. But there are certain circumstances where a journalist is allowed to use deception. So you find that most of the journalists use, or they, they try to abuse, you know, this rule. It's a kind of a shit rule, but we should use it wisely as journalists. It's not always the case that journalists should use deception. In most cases, actually, in more than, in, in, in more than 90%, as a journalist, you have to introduce yourself. Don't use deception. You know, try to be as open as possible so that you get an information free and communicate it to the audience. So they therefore use hidden cameras. You find that some people, some journalists use hidden cameras, recorders uh, and actors uncover participants in uh, criminal situations and other form of deception to get the information for publication. Fine, but there must be justifiable reasons for a journalist to do that. Let us see Kovac and Rothschild, 2001. These are authors. They come up with a three-step test to be applied for employing these deceptive means in news gathering techniques. So what are they saying when it comes to the deception or using you know, deception or deceptive you know, ways to gather a particular story? So according to them, they say the information, if you want to use deception to get a news coverage, the information must be sufficiently vital to the public interest to justify your deception. Remember the previous studies? We talked about public interest. Journalists in more than 90% went for the public. And the stories actually should bear the public interest. So the information must be sufficiently vital to the public interest if we want to use deception. If you think that you're going to collect a certain amount of information and you have your deceptive, you know, appliances here, hidden cameras, for example, hidden microphones, and you're going to, to cover a certain story, and you think that the story is not worthy for public interest, and yet you're going to use deceptive means. Don't do that, and that is actually unethical as part of journalism. journalism. We are saying that the information should entirely be, you know, worthy for the public interest. If it doesn't fit such a criteria, please drop your deceptive appliances and be as often, introduce yourself, the media organization that you're working for, etc. Et and the motive behind which you were there to cover that particular kind of story. We are saying journalists should not engage in masquerade or deceptive unless there is no any other way to get the story. So which means now that should be the last you know alternative should be the last resort for journalists to use deceptive means. Journalists should reveal to the audience whenever they mislead sources to get information and explain their reasons for doing so, including why the story justifies the deception and why this was the only way to get the facts. So it happens that you found no way that you can gather that information. And the only way for you is just to use deception. Fine. Now, it's being required 
as one of the professional requirements for journalists, whether you've used deception, try to tell your audience why you have used deception, why you resorted to use, using deception. You have to tell your readers, why did you do so? What was the motive behind? Was the story worth enough to use deceptive means? Does the story justify deception? And by the way, remember that the story is going to be, you know, covered before the audience. So the audience are the ones to weigh whether the story justifies the deception. From your point of view as a journalist, you might see that this story, you know, fits to use deceptive means. But on the other hand, or to the contrary, the public out there might see it wrongly that you use deceptive means in a wrong way. So mind you that the public out there is also keen enough to understand whether this story required any kind of deceptive use. So meanwhile, there are some truths that the media is not expect, expected to publish. It might happen that you have a kind of a story, and as an investigative reporter, that the story is there, and, and what you want to cover is for the public interest, yes, we understand that the story you know, justifies to be part of the public interest. But still, it's not, you're not required to publish that particular kind of a story. And you're not allowed to do so. So there are circumstances where, as a journalist, regardless of whether the story is true or is for the public interest, but you are not allowed to do so. So what are those stories? So we find unpublishable stories, but an unpublishable truth are the truths that are not in the interest of the public, or the truth that can compromise to the national security and integrity. We have one author referred to as Okoye, 2008, who says, unpublishable truth are the truth that are not of public interest. For example, imagine the situation that the writer had, had, has gone in quarrel, had gone in quarrel with his fellow colleague, for example, or his fellow reporter, this morning. So, it is true that they have gone in quarrel, and these are, both of them are reporters, and it's true. But now, is it for public interest? So another example of unpublishable truth is the truth that undermines the national security or the national cohesion, or truth that may be considered blasphemous by any religious group. For example, here is a journalist who wants to cover a story from the army. So any stories that are related to the army or police force or this law enforcement Forcing agents, etc., etc. Et so there are certain rules, there are certain limitations uh, beyond which, as a journalist, you're not allowed to trespass. The, uh, the army has their own; they have their own rules of which journalists have to abide. The courtrooms have their own rules that journalists should not go beyond. You cannot go and cover you know, a story in the army concerning the you know, army tunnels that is for the national security. I've been here in Tanzania for more than you know, almost 40, 42 years, but still I don't know even a single army tunnel in the country. And yet we have journalists here. We, we don't know the weapons, the massive weapons that the Tanzanian army, you know, is possessing. Why? 
because that is for the national security. It, it, it's true that we have all those gadgets, fine, but there's no way that we can cover such stories for the sake of the national security. So those are the circumstances that we have truth, but yet we cannot cover. Now let's see at the objectivity, which means now objectivity is also another ethical principle that we have to discuss. Objectivity means the absence of subjectivity or the bias, prejudice of partisanship. So, when you talk of these ethical principles in journalism, objectivity is just one of them. So we're, we're saying, journalists must be objective. And if you lack objective, it means you're being subjective. You are biased, prejudiced, partisanship. Media audience expect the utmost objectivity. We're yes. saying that Journalists should abide to the truth, you must be objective. Don't impose your own ideas, don't be subjective. We say stories should bear, facts should be balanced. Always try to seek different sources. Don't be subjective, don't add up your own ideas, subjective ideas for that matter. Don't be biased. We have, you know, sources A and B, so you're trying to lean on source A and leave out source B. That is not it. Partisanship. Maybe you belong to a certain political party, you are affiliated to a certain political party, and you don't want to cover uh, stories of the opposition party, or you cover the stories of the opposition party in a negative way, that is not allowed. Because your position as a journalist is to become neutral. You are just conveying the information to the audience out there without any impartiality. If you look at Frost 2007, that's one of the author. I remember I said, I was trying to define objectivity as related to the terms such as bias. Uh, the bias means the deliberate slanting of a story to favor one side of the argument rather than another on the grounds of the personal choice of, of the writer. So in other words, we don't have to be biased as reporters. Don't favor one side. We're talking of balance. What do we mean? It's the idea that the journalist can and should present equally two sides of an argument. Always balance your information. That which is objective cannot and should not contain that which is subjective, as I said before. So meaning that a journalist should not allow his or her feelings and beliefs to intrude in the article. Your role is just like a radio presenter or the, the, the panelist who moderates the discussion program. The same applies with the news writer in this case, that your role is to get the facts from different sources, divergent sources for that matter, compile such sources and convey the information to the public out there. Don't add your opinion. Unless if you're trying to write a feature story, and in this case, opinionated feature story as a news writer, that's only where you're allowed to do so. But in most of the hard news, please don't add up your opinion and don't try to be subject. So neutral and impartial taking side, the journalist stands aloof from any decision making. So let's look at fairness. We think the idea that the journalist gives all sides of the argument and that is a fair theory. Fairness presupposes that if all parties to a story or event are given an equal and fair hearing through adequate reporting, that is said to be fine. 
information about all the angles of the story is reported and all the sides to an argument or controversy are being presented. That is fairness. We must abide to fairness. The Washington Post, Washington Post Code of Ethics, as cited in the Okoye, it says, no story is fair if it omits facts of major importance or significance. So that story is not fair. No facts means no story. Fairness includes completeness. A story should be complete with all the sources included, as I said. No story is fair. No story is fair if it is consciously or unconsciously mislead or even deceive the reader. So you find that if the story is like, deceives the reader, trying to use your subjective words, etc., that the story does not work in to be published. Fairness also includes honest leveling with the reader. So must mind you that you are trying to cover the story uh, so that the reader out there consumes your product. So if you are if, if you're conveying the wrong information, then that story, it means you're not being fair to the public that you said. So let us look also another another ethical principle, and that is accuracy. So when you talk about accuracy, we are referring to truthfulness, correctness, exactness, or precision. So in the information that the media practitioners provide for their audience. Media audience must be able to trust whatever information they are getting from the media and for the media not to lose the trust or the, or, or the audience. So we find that in most cases today, uh, we have so many outlets uh, all over Africa, including Tanzania. But now the problem that is that it's very unfortunate some media outlets start to lose the credit. Because mind you that the audience out there have a, have a great trust to the media practitioners. You find people out there saying, okay, fine, I've heard this and this from the media. I've heard such and such a story uh, from the radio. I've heard such a, they've announced this and this from a certain television. So the audience is trying to associate these media outlets with the truth, always. So which means now, if the radio station, if the television station broadcasts something that is not true, or broadcasts something that at the end of the day, the public out there would come to realize that was, what was broadcast was wrong, then it means that particular radio station, that particular television station is going to lose audience. And worse enough, it's going to lose its credibility. And the announcers, the writers, are also going to face the same consequence. So in other words now, as a media practitioner, they must go the extra mile in checking the correctness of an information derived from sources and interviewees. You have to give exact figures in case that require statistics, for example, like population reported accidents, similar events, etc. Et so especially if you're involved, if your story involves statistics, you must make sure that at least you get the validated statistics from the authoritative you know, figures. And in this case, for example, in Tanzania, we have the chief government statisticians. From the Tanzania Bureau of Statistics. You don't just get statistics anyhow. You don't fabricate statistics. That is against the law in Tanzania. If you refer to the Statistics Act 2015. Dear students, we proceed and we are saying that care should also be taken to ensure that the names, addresses, because you are very important that you correct or you, you spell the names of the authoritative figures, the names of celebrities you correct, you spell them well. The addresses, the physical addresses, you know, you have to be very accurate. Positions, don't refer to somebody 
uh, a doctor while he's a professor or she's a professor. Locations, try to be precise, where exactly, the age of respondents, etc. And other related information, make sure that they're as accurate and correct spells as possible. It's better that you drop out the story if you think that it lacks necessary facts or it lacks necessary data to support. The danger is if you lack necessary evidence, you as a journalist you might be sued later. And that can undermine your professional career and it undermines the credibility of the radio station, it undermines the credibility of the news medium that you're working for as a journalist. Now, dear students, I want you to engage in a class activity now that cites a story published in any of the local media in which any of the ethical principles discussed here are neglected. So I want you to, to be in a group of uh, three or four or five and try to cite a story published in any of the local medium around in which any of the ethical principles that we've discussed are being neglected and show how are they being neglected and perhaps suggest the best ethical way to overcome such problems. Dear students, after having discussed all those ethical principles that are very common in journalism, I hope that you have understood well and you're going to do this particular exercise in a very organized manner. So I think we shall meet next time in Norwich Area 6 where we shall discuss the common ethical problems in journalism. Today we discussed about ethical principles in journalism. So when we meet next time in Norwich Area 6, we're going to explore and propound on the common ethical problems that journalists face today. Dear students, I thank you for your kind attention and meet you next time. Thank you very much.